In this segment, we're going to get into the double ZEP antenna. Now, last month we got into the ZEP antenna, or the J-pole, and the J-pole was a fairly easy uh, antenna to make, and the double ZEP is just this simple. Uh, the actual length of copper pipe, the half-inch copper pipe that I, uh, that I bought, not only made one J-pole, but it also made one double ZEP antenna. Now, the reason I like this specific double ZEP antenna is it's actually dual band. It will operate in the 2 meter as well as the 70 centimeter band. 2 meter being 144 to 148 megahertz and uh, 70 centimeter being uh, you know, between uh, uh, somewhere in the 440 band or 440 megahertz. So this actually does make it good for an emergency antenna. If you notice, I was able to use these uh, threaded fitting adapters, which I'll actually close up, uh, get a close up of in a moment, to uh, pretty much deconstruct this antenna to be easily portable. So you're not you know, holding this huge freaking crucifix of amateur radio around with you at all times. Another cool thing about this antenna, which I'll get another close-up in a moment, is the actual feed point. The feed point in which I, the, uh, the actual RF or coax attaches to, you can actually design this so it's actually adjusted. Now, being that it can be adjusted down the actual ass end of this antenna makes it so you can actually change the resonant frequency, always good on the field, and you can actually change the SWR, which in a little while I'll show you how to tune this antenna on, uh, using an SWR meter. Making this an extremely versatile antenna that can be used on practically anything 2 meter and 440. Now, I can't recall the measurements off the top of my head, so I'll just measure them out for you real quick. I do believe this was close to uh, 16 inches. Yep, each one of these elements is 16 inches. And this is close to 18 inches. And there should be a half inch gap between the two. Now, of course, whenever you're making all of your measurements, you want to make sure you're actually measuring the outside diameter, not the center or the, the, the outside. Now, uh, putting this together is relatively easy. You do not have to use copper pipe, but of course, the thicker the material that you're using, the more wattage you'll be able to pass through it. This can easily handle above 50 watts of power. Now, um, some people are probably scratching their heads right now going, hey, Fox, why in Sam hell is the coax actually shorted out on this? And uh, the reason being, this is what we call a closed-loop dipole. Now, originally, when we were doing the Wi-Fi stuff, I only really mentioned uh, what we call an open-loop dipole, where you only have a wire going one way and then the other on the actual feed line. The reason we actually have a closed loop is we actually use this for an impedance match. By adjusting where the actual short on the wire is, we'll, or where the feed point will actually be, we'll actually adjust how much impedance, thus standing wave ratio, will actually be on the feed line itself. Now, let me go to the table side real quick, and I'll show you a little bit more about how I put this antenna together, and then we'll go into uh, tuning it with the SWR meter. The materials for a double zep are extremely easy to get. You can use copper pipe or you can use any kind of conductive material that you can easily solder on. Now, of course, I had to go and use a propane torch. Now, whenever you're using any kind of propane or map gas torch, whatever you do, do not directly inhale any of its contents. That could be extremely hazardous to your, to your health and possibly kill more brain cells than you can afford. Now, whenever you're doing any kind of sweat soldering with copper, you need to make sure that your ends are extremely shiny. So wind up using some kind of abrasive pad, Brillo, uh, steel wool, or even sandpaper to make sure that your actual, uh, that the ends that you're soldering are extremely shiny. Now, I also did buy uh, soldering flux as well as common everyday, just solder for sweating, you know, copper pipes together. This stuff was relatively inexpensive. I think, um, just the materials here as well as the torch was about twenty dollars and the length of copper pipe was about twenty dollars so the antenna itself really shouldn't cost you more than twenty twenty five dollars not including the cost of connectors and such now i also use this stuff called band iron band iron is typ typically used for affixing copper pipes or other electrical conduit to the ceiling in some kind of construction project in this case which i'll show you i've actually used this as the feed point itself now, you'll actually notice that I'm using a square panel mount end connector, which was actually for, uh, left over from our Wi-Fi stuff. But I had to grind this down so it wouldn't actually make physical contact with the actual uh, you know, direct short with this. And if you notice, this is actually a direct short because it eventually does lead to the S end of this. And this uh, band iron, you can also, if you're in a desperate pinch, just take 
wire, just copper wire, solid copper wire, 22 gauge bell wire, and wrap it around a whole bunch of tight times very nicely and very neatly and tightly, and then solder it directly to your feed point. You don't need to use an end connector. You can use a, a PL or an SO connector, whatever, you know, whatever your radio requirements are. And by using this, or you can use um, the, what's called copper hangers. It's the same idea as the band iron. Now the band iron might actually be called something else in your location, so if you take a pic, take a screenshot of this, and show the person what it really is uh, when you're at the hardware store. But you can also use uh, copper pipe hangers. It's the same idea as this, made out of copper that you can pretty much wrap around in the same fashion and allow it so you can actually adjust this up and down, so you can actually adjust your SWR. Now. The actual fitted adapters that I have here, you'll actually notice that when they're actually screwed together, they, um, they will lead in one direction, meaning that when it rains, the water will not drip into the threading. The water will actually drip around and over the threading. So when water drips, notice it'll go over these threads and then it'll drip off of these threads. It won't go the other way. It will not drip into the threading. Being that copper will tarnish and can rust, if you get this wet, it will eventually turn into a green piece of crap, much like the Statue of Liberty. So, uh, if you do plan on caving this outside, like Mustang and Uxor have, I would highly recommend that you coat the entire thing in some kind of spray paint. Uh, Non-conductive, of course, you know, just some kind of flat color. If you have some kind of homo uh, homeowners association that will get really pissed if you have an antenna outside of your house, so you can actually paint it to match the siding of your house and hide it fairly well. Now, some precautions whenever doing any kind of sweat soldering. You do not want to go and point the flame, which you cannot always see, in the direction of anything that you're not afraid to destroy. Never grab the actual copper pipe with your bare hands. Always have a couple of spare pairs of pliers, and perhaps even locking pliers on hand so you can actually manage your material. Uh, do not, whatever you do, do not do any kind of welding on concrete. Concrete does contain small minus amount of water that can evaporate or they'll heat up, get superheated, expand, and will shatter little bits of the concrete. Not only ruining the concrete itself, but, and in my case has, shot scalding hot bits of concrete directly into my eyes. So, you have been warned. Now, uh, I really don't know much more to tell you about sweat soldering. It's a fairly simple process, and as long as you're not a total fucking idiot about it, you can easily put this thing together. If you really aren't comfortable with sweat soldering, uh, you can easily just use copper wire and make a lower wattage version of this very same antenna. Let's go to the SWR side, and I'll show you exactly how to tune the double zap antenna for a specific SWR for whatever frequency you plan on operating on. Alright, here we have my SWR meter, the double zap feed point, got some coax, got my radio, now, the double zep antenna is actually being held in place by a desk clamp, and I'll show you in a moment that not only the additional material that's being held over here, but your physical body, when it gets in the way of the antenna itself, will actually throw the SWR off. Now, um, I'm going to key up at 5 watts on a very low frequency on the, uh, on the amateur radio 2-meter uh, uh, band, and we'll go and get an SWR check. Alright, so that's putting out relatively good SWR. Let me go up to the upper side of the, uh, the uh, amateur radio 2 meter band. Oh, wrong frequency. Now notice how that's 1.6 to 1. That's, that's a little high. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this feed point. We're going to move it back until we can eventually... Oops, changed my radio frequency. All right. I'm going to move this down a bit. Okay, now we're down to 1.4, a little bit over 1.2. All right, one point, where I said now we're up to 1.2 to 1, we'll go back to the, the lower side. There we go, we're pushing out 305 watts. All right, so let's go to the uh, 70 centimeter band, 440 megahertz. It's pushing out pretty good. Let's go to... Uh, uh, still only pushing about one and a half watts. So again, you just go and adjust the actual feed point. Now, let's go back to the uh, the two meter band real quick. All right. So watch the SWR meter. Barely moving. Let's throw the SWR off a bit. Still not throwing it off. Still not throwing it off. 
All right, let's come on. Give me some SWR, damn it. All right, now watch what happens when I actually get in the way. Now, not sure if you notice or not, but just your physical presence that's actually passing through the, uh, the, radio's, the radio field that's emanating by the antenna is actually going to throw off the standing wave ratio. Now, that's another cool thing about the actual double ZEP. It makes it a great amateur radio, emergency use, or just general use antenna. Not only can you actually change its resonant frequency by adjusting the actual position of the feed point, you can also adjust the standing wave ratio. And with a little bit of elbow grease, you can actually unscrew the elements and break it down to be a relatively easy to carry with you portable antenna, making the double zap so far one of my favorite general use radio antennas.